in this lecture video i'll give you a brief introduction of design principles and then we'll look into object oriented design using uml and the various notations in uml software design and implementation is the stage in the software engineering process at which an executable software system is developed for simple systems software design and implementation is software engineering and all the other activities are merged with this process however for large systems software design and implementation is only one of a set of processes which is involved in software engineering now software design and implementation activities can be interleaved software design is a creative activity in which you identify software components their relationships based on customer requirements implementation on the other hand is the process of realizing the design as a program or writing a code to implement the design sometimes there is a separate design stage and this design is modeled and documented at other times design is in the programmer's head or roughly sketched on a whiteboard or a sheet of paper design is about how you solve a problem so there is always a design process before you move on to implementation now when it comes to implementation stage one of the most important decisions that has to be made at an early stage of the software project is whether or not you should buy or build the application software in a wide range of domains it is now possible to buy off the shelf systems that can be then tweaked and tailored to the user's requirements for example if you want to implement a medical record system you can buy a package that is already used in hospitals rather than building it from scratch it can be cheaper faster to use this kind of an uh, approach rather than developing a system in a conventional programming language let's now look at object oriented design using the uml an object oriented system as we already know is made up of interacting objects that maintain their own state and behavior or they have their own set of values to attributes and they define the operations that can be invoked on them the representation of the state is private and hence an object cannot be directly accessed object oriented design process involves designing classes and the relationship between these classes these classes will then define the objects in the system and how they interact with each other object oriented systems are easier to change than systems developed using functional approaches objects can include data and operations to manipulate the data they may therefore be understood and modified as stand alone entities that is changing the implementation of an object or adding additional operations or services to an object will not affect other system objects because objects are associated with things there is often a clear mapping between real world entities such as hardware components and their controlling objects in the system to develop a system design from concept to detail object oriented design there are several things you should keep in mind firstly understand and define the context and the external interactions with the system second design the system's architecture third identify the principal objects in the system fourth develop design models fifth specify interfaces so these are the object oriented design principles that you have to follow so like all creative activities design is not a clear cut completely sequential process you develop a design by getting ideas proposing solutions and refining these solutions as more and more information becomes available let's now take a look at system context and interactions 
The first stage in any software design process is to develop an understanding of the relationships between the software that is being designed and its external environment. Now, this becomes essential for deciding what functionality your system should provide and what functionality the system will obtain from other systems in its environment. This also lets you set boundaries for the system. System context models and interaction models present complementary views of the relationships between a system and its environment. A context system model is a structural model that demonstrates the other systems in the environment of the system being developed. An interaction model, on the other hand, is a dynamic model that shows how the system interacts with this environment as it is used. Let's take a look at context models. The context model of a system may be represented using associations. Associations simply show that there is relationship between the entities involved in an association. You may therefore document the environment of the system using a simple block diagram showing the entities in the systems and their association. This is illustrated here in this figure. Now, this figure shows that the systems in the environment or in the context of the wilderness weather station are a control system, a weather information system, a satellite system, and a weather station. You can see which entities in this context or in this environment are connected. They are shown by this link connecting them. Also, you can see there is cardinality information on the link or multiplicity information on the link. If we try to read this, we can say a control system will control one to n weather stations. Similarly, weather information system will have information from one to n weather station. A control system will control one weather information system. A weather information system is monitor monitored by a satellite. A satellite can monitor one up to n weather stations. So this introduced, this shows you all the subsystems that are there in the environment of the wilderness weather station. And it also shows which of these subsystems are related, not subsystems, which of these systems are related and what is the cardinality uh, or how are they related. Now, when you model the interactions of the system with its environment, you should use an abstract approach and should not include too much detail. One way of keeping abstractions and eliminating details is to represent interactions of the system using a use case model. As we already know, each use case represents one interaction with the system. Each possible use case, which is one interaction, is named in an ellipse, and the external entity involved is, inter is in the interaction is represented using stick figures. Now, the use case model for the weather interaction or the weather wilderness station is shown here. This shows that the weather station interacts with the weather information system. It reports the, the weather data and the status of the weather station hardware. Other interactions are the control system that can issue specific weather station control commands. A stick figure here used here represents other systems as well as human actors. Now, each of these use cases, so there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven use cases, seven, eight use cases. So each of these use cases represent one single interaction. So a weather information system can report weather or report status. A control system can be restarted. It can be shut down. You can reconfigure. You can go into power save mode. You can remotely control. Now, each of these use cases must be described in a structured natural language. Now, this helps the designers identify objects in the system and gives them an understanding of what the system intends to do. Now, in this table, I have just taken this report weather, only one use case, and I have, I'm sorry, yeah, report weather, and I have described it in a structured natural language format. So the system is weather station. Okay. 
The use case I'm going to describe is report weather, which is this use case. The actors involved are weather information system and weather station, weather information system and weather station, because weather information system is linked with the weather system. The stimulus is the weather information system establishes a satellite communication link with the weather station and requests for transmission of data. So this is the trigger uh, this use case has to receive. And when it receives the trigger, the response will be the summarized data that will be sent to the connected or the linked weather information system. So this is the data of uh, being exchanged, being computed, being collected and filtered. So in this way, you can write a structured description for every of the use case uh, which you have shown here in this diagram. 